Let's start with, what's this called? Diameter. Diameter. Okay. So if we take that diameter, say it was five, we put it down here, we need a different color, stretch it, lay it along here. You know, it's not going to make it all the way over there because it's having to travel all around the, the thing, the outside of it. So maybe it stops about there. Okay, we talked about this last time. How many times can I lay that diameter around the circle? That's 3.14. 3.14. Repeat No, not repeating. 5, 2, 1, 9, 7. Now you're making it up. At least know for those numbers, you're making it up. Uh, how many? About 3.141592.65? Yeah. Somebody in the other class said two seven, so it sounded like they maybe rounded. I don't. And so on and so on and so on. If we uh, do what? We have to have that. No, we don't. I'm just trying to show you that there there is a an exact answer. If I hit pi, it goes up to two six five four, but I don't know if that four is rounded up or if it is. That's, that's what the calculator would do. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, exactly what number is this? Pi, yeah, pi <laughs> is that number, it's 3.14 and so on. Okay, not pi like the food pi, pi like the Greek letter pi, pi, uh, and 3.14 of those can fit around. Uh, so we just call it D. If we were to take D and multiply it by 3.1415926, and so on, we would get, what would we get? The circumference. The circumference, very good. We get the circumference. Okay. Uh, if we take this D, and we say, well, a D is just two of what? Radius. 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 So, so two, it could be pi times, times two times R, right? Two yeah. times R would be D. That would be C. But we most often see it written like this, two pi R. Okay. We're going to use that. Two pi R is going to get used today. All right. So keep that in mind. The purpose of that is to remind you that the circumference is 2 pi r, that that's the uh, formula for it, okay? But also to take some of the mystery out of it. If you hadn't looked at it before like that, now you have, and at least you have some way to kind of make sense and believe that that's true rather than just, uh, well, to, to be convinced that that's true rather than just having to take it on faith, right? In math, we don't like to take a lot of things on faith. We like to prove that things are true. And it certainly is much more believable now than it was before. Pi times an A. Now, if I wanted to theoretically make like an infinitely tall stack of these binders, stack them on top of each other, then how would you do that? Yes? You would put one binder facing this way. So something like this. Yeah, and then the other one facing the other way. Facing the other way. Now we're back to a flat surface, pretty much. Then we can just keep doing that over and over and over. I said something different, but that's alright. You said something different? Yep. Did you make like a half circle thing? <laughs> yeah, I Somebody had them. I had them coming in like this, and so you just stack oh. them. And I'm in. Yeah, I saw that. That's why I kind of put the, the extra words in there. If we wanted to make like an infinitely tall stack of them. Couldn't do it that way because I saw somebody else do that. Draw a little picture of that on there. I thought I, I, that makes sense. It didn't fall over, right? Yeah. yeah sure. But I was just maybe I should have reworded this a little bit. I think that's clever. But what I meant was like, if we wanted to be able to just keep stacking it, keep stacking it, keep stacking it, <laughs> and keep it kind of straight like this in real life. Yeah, I mean, eventually it's so heavy it's just gonna fall down. But, but the other one wouldn't because it's just sloping. But I bet if we could stack more this way than we could get in that half circle. <laughs> I don't know. Because you got two coming at an angle. You got two forces. Oh, you did like two stacks like this? <clears throat> no. Oh. Okay. All right. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I had them coming in. Mm -hmm. 
talked about the trapezoid, right? Mm -hmm. Let's see, let's, let's kind of quiz our trapezoid knowledge. We did. Do we trapezoid? Yeah. yeah. Am I wrong? Yes. No, we did. We did. <laughs> All right, here, I'm going to give you a trapezoid. Oh, yeah, I remember. I was talking about like a uh, stop sign. 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 Let's call this 23. Call this one 15. Uh, and the height. We'll give that seven. All right. Tell me the area of that trapezoid. Just work it out in your notes. This is your notes that you keep. You're not handing it to me. Just work out the area. I'll come around and see how you're doing. Okay. Uh, let me just do a little bit of moving around and stuff and see if I can help you remember how we can find the area of this trapezoid. Okay. I'll take the whole thing. To, uh, group it all together so that it all will move around together. Now I'm going to copy this whole thing. Then what? Flip it around. It's not the not the way to like to prove that this is what the area should be. There's lots of different ways, but it certainly is a way. I think a good way. Okay, there it is. So now it's flipped around. Now what? Okay. Well, what about this makes me think that I should do 15 times 23? What? What about this picture is making me think that 15 times 23 is not good? No, it wouldn't. You'd have to take 23 times 7. 23 times 7? Well, we've almost got like a, a handy little shape here. Maybe we can just do one little thing. Um, I know. Sorry, I'm terrible with names and I'm still learning them, but I'm trying to learn. Uh, Ethan. So you could just like cut that end of the triangle. This one? Yeah. And then put it on the other side, like what we did with the um, parallelogram. With the parallelogram. Move it over there. We cut it straight down, right? So this is a 90. So 90, uh, that's a 90, oh, so it's supposed to be a 90. So it's a what now? What shape is this? A rectangle. A rectangle. It was, well, it is a parallelogram. It's a special parallelogram called a rectangle, where all the sides are, uh, well, all the angles are 90 degrees. And yes, what do you have? Well, take it the rest of the way? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. But well, then you add the two bases together, so 23 plus 15. Because we have a rectangle, a rectangle to find the area, very simple, base times height, right? That counts all the squares that fit, that's what area is, really easily, right? So to find how long the space is, you would add those together and you get what? Uh, 38. 38, okay, 15 plus 23, 38. And then what do you do? You add, times it by seven. By seven, so that's gonna give me the area of this whole rectangle, right? With this little triangle over here moved over from here. Okay. Um, can I take it? Sure. The then you would multiply that by one half or divide it by two because the rectangle is made up of two of the trapezoids and you're just trying to find what the trapezoid is. So. Oh, very well said. Yeah. We found the area of this rectangle, which is completely made up of two of those trapezoids, right? No extra. No gaps, no more than we need. Exactly two trapezoids can make this rectangle. So when we find the area of the rectangle, we find the area of two trapezoids. We only want one trapezoid. Cut it in half, we have one trapezoid. 38 times 7 divided by 2. 133. 133? Yep. Okay. Here's an important question 133 what? Squares. 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 
listening to everybody, everybody saying? Squares. squares. Okay. I think I only heard squares. Square unit. Am I spelling square unit? Squares. Okay, so here's the question. It's an important question to clear up. Is it squares, or can I just do this? Yeah. No. Is that the same no. thing? No. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Yes. I don't know. All right, I'll give you the answer. No, it's not the same. This is saying 133 squares, right? It's things, 133 things. This is saying 133 squared, which means 133 times 133, right? We counted the squares that will fit in this trapezoid. How many squares will fit? 133. 133 times 133 is big or small? Big. Okay, very big, right? Very, very big. And is that the number of squares that will fit? <laughs> no. Not squares that like that 15 can fit here and 23 can fit there. Right? See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like really tiny squares could. But then we're talking about different size squares. Right? So 133 squares. And what squares? Squares where 15 of those squares would fit along this side and 23 would fit along this side. So squares. Not a square. Okay? But the there is something to be said about this two there. Like that, it's not in your head for no reason. Okay, but it's not. A, it's not the number one thirty three that you're squared. What's squared? Let's talk about that. Okay, if fifteen squares fit along here, let's pretend I drew fifteen squares. Okay, there's one of those squares, right? Mm -hmm. All right. The reason why we can't <coughs> really Put a square here, unless we were, if we were to say units squared. I heard somebody say units squared. Yeah. Sure, if it's a unit squared, right? Square units. Okay. What we're doing is we're finding the area. We're counting the number of squares that fit. 133 squares fit. The thing is, I don't know what kind of squares. Okay, so let's make it a kind of a square, a specific kind of square. Feet. If this is feet, that's the first thing I heard. Feet. Feet, everything's measured in feet. Yeah, I, I gotta try to write that upside down. Feet, 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 feet. Everything's feet. Okay? Well, then right here is one of these squares. How long is it on this side? How long is this side of the square? A foot. Just right here. Oh, one foot. Okay, let's let's Make it bigger, talk about it over here. This one is one foot on one side. <coughs> How many feet is it on this side? One, one, one foot. foot. What's the area of this square? One How one. many squares will fit in this square? One, one. one square. One. What kind of square? One. Big. Square foot. Square foot. Big foot square. Foot. Big foot square. Big. Yeah. What kind of a square? A foot square. <laughs> and that's what foot square means. When I say 133 feet like squared, I mean a Square, foot, a foot, that is a square on all sides. A foot square. Uh, hopefully we've cleared that up. It's not 133 squared, no, it's 133 squares. And until I tell you how, like what those measurements were in, you can't really say what kind of square, you can just say that they're squares. As soon as I put units on it, now we can say what kind of squares they are. Foot squares, centimeter squares, and so on. Let's do one more trapezoid real quick. Yeah, we're all on the same page. One more. one more trapezoid. Two. Uh, Eighteen. And uh, twenty-one. Just so it's clear, fifty-two from here to here, not to there, all the way across. Fifty-two.
let's run through this together real quick. All right. Now, according to what we just did, I should be able to, like I don't have to recreate this picture, right? Like in my head I could, right? And that's what I would expect you to do if, I do this every time, like every year that it comes back up, area of a trapezoid, area of a trapezoid. We use trapezoids in, in calculus, and every time I have to remind myself what the formula for the area is, and I do that little picture in my head. Okay. But then once I'm reminded, I can kind of remember for a, another year, but I take the 52, add the 18, okay? If I were to recreate the picture by copying it, what does 52 plus 18 tell me about this shape? <coughs> 70, what? Like, if I, were, if I were to redraw that shape, copy, flip, and all that kind of stuff, what would 52 plus 18 tell me about that? Base Yeah, it's base 1 and base 2. But when I add base 1 and base 2 in that picture that we drew on the last slide, what does it tell me? We're making a rectangle, right? What about the rectangle? What does it tell me? Um, it would tell you that that 52 plus 18 is the base of that rectangle. The base of that big, long rectangle, yeah. That's the base of that rectangle. Okay, 52 plus 18. And what else? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so this is 70 times 21. So this is like the base times the height of that rectangle that we can make. And then? And then times one half. Or divide by two. Or divide by two, it's all the same. Okay, so that's like one half times 70 times 21. That's 35 times 21. 735. 735. 735 what? Squares. Squares. What kind of squares? It doesn't have the unit. Yeah, But as soon as we put a unit on it, centimeters. Now what kind of squares are they? Centimeter squares. Centimeter squares. Squares that are a centimeter on every side. Now 735 squared, not the number 735 times 735. There it is. So for a trapezoid, base one and this base two and this height. How can I find the area? I would do the same thing. We're going to multiply these together first and then divide by yeah. two. It's the same. And it's, yeah. yeah. But I think it just a little, looks a little bit cleaner if we do that. It looks the same. Or you might see one half, like times one half, or however you want to look at it. Now, if I had just told you, if I just told you, hey, here's the formula. You can certainly use it, you can apply it, you can say, okay, base one, add base two, multiply by the height, divide by two, and have the area. But you would really not know why that is. Now, you may remember this correctly, you may not, like me, I don't. I just don't bother remembering it, because I can just recreate it whenever I need to know it. Once I recreate it, I'll remember that for a few months. It'll stick with me. I don't have to recreate it every time. But a year later, I'll forget it. And I'll just recreate it again. Right. It's the gift I'm trying to give to you. You can recreate this knowledge. All right, so now let's talk about... Um, So we're trying to find the area of a circle. And whether or not you remember what the area of a circle's formula is, it doesn't matter. We're going to recreate it. We're going to create a little 
little convincing drawing of you know, why the equation is what it is. Okay. So the thing about a circle is it has no straight sides. So it's not like a trapezoid, it's not like a parallelogram, it's not like a triangle where we just kind of, or it doesn't seem like it is, so we can cut it up and make a rectangle out of it. But that's actually what we're going to do. We're going to make a rectangle out of this circle. Okay? Wow. You cut it right down the middle. So we need to remember a couple things. Actually, I think I have on the next slide. Not quite. Uh, a couple things. The radius is from there to there, right? And all the way around. It's called what? Circumference. Circumference. And circumference, we talked about it a little bit ago, is equal to what? Pi. Pi times d squared. Pi times d squared? I mean, two times pi. Two times pi. Pi times radius. That's what I meant. I didn't mean to say squared. Oh, you meant, okay, I see. Well, I'll leave it d times two. We don't want to do that. And remember, pi is this number. It's a little bit bigger than three, right? A little bit bigger than three. And this two times r is equal to what in the circle? 2 times r is equal to what of the circle? The diameter. The diameter, okay? The diameter all the way across two radiuses together. And you can see that about three diameters, looks like about three diameters would go around the circle. 2 pi r, pi d. We're going to use 2 pi r because that's going to be convenient. We'll see. Uh, if from here to here, is 2 pi r. How about from here to here? Pi r. Pi r. Just half of 2 pi r. Just 1 pi r. Right? So half the circumference is just pi r. Divide both sides by 2, you get pi r. You guys don't think like that. You have equations. Divide both sides by 2, add 3 to both sides, that kind of thing. Done that before? I'm pretty sure you have, because on the test it looks like a lot of you have. Uh, so if I take this equation, c equals 2 pi r, divide both sides by 2, so half of the circumference is equal to, oh, well, these cancel each other out, pi r. Mm -hmm. right? Maybe not a ton, but some at least. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, so half the circumference is pi r. So how are we going to turn this circle into a rectangle? We're going to do it, uh, well, we'll take it step by step so you can see the, the idea. Okay, just the, the basic strategy here is, we're going to cut it into wedges. Do you see why I think about those binders? Yeah. And you stack them alternating so that they'll just like scroll along like that. So this, in this example, we cut it into 14 pieces, all right? And here is like piece number one is right there. How long is this? From there to there. It's the radius. radius. Radius of the circle. Radius of the circle. Now, just like those binders, they're alternating. There's one like this, then one down like this, one up like this, one down like that. So we follow these curves, because when you slice it, you should wind up with a little bit of that curve right there, like a piece of pie, right? Okay. Where, like, where are these little arcs coming from? That's the circulation of the circle. Circulation of the circle. There is a word that is this is the that the circumference is coming from the You're circumference. You're close, Nim. Just like tapped it off. Very, very close. <laughs> so it's coming from the circumference. How much of the circumference is just the top part here? Half. Half of it. How much is half? The radius. The diameter. It's half of the, well, the circumference is 2 pi r. So, so half of the circumference r. is 1 pi r. So pi r. That's r and that's pi r. But that's not terribly useful. That's not a rectangle. So what we do is, well, let's start with even more pieces. Cut it into even more pieces. And as, as I cut it into more pieces, this angle gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And this gets more and more vertical. 
It's closer and closer to being vertical. Okay. How long is this from here to there? Diagonal. Radius. Radius. The radius. How much of the circumference is this? Pi r. Right? It's half the circumference, so it's pi r. Right? If I had the radius, I'd multiply by pi. Not 2 pi, just pi. Now, this next part that I'm going to show you, it's a little bit challenging for yeah. some students. The trouble with infinity. Okay? Now, infinity, what is infinity? Can someone tell me what infinity is? It's the thing that never stops. Okay, it never stops. It never ends. Lens. The number that never ends, yes. The number that never ends. Isn't that Google button? Doesn't begin or end. <laughs> Any number that doesn't begin or end? Any number that doesn't begin or end? What kind of a number doesn't begin or end? Zero? Pi. So zero is infinity? No. Yeah, because okay. the decimal point is that. The decimal point. Hmm. Yeah. Pi. Pi is infinity? No, it's not infinity, but it is. What about it is infinite? Um, how it how it keeps going on and on and on forever and doesn't oh, stop. The, the digits yeah. of pi yeah. never end. The decimal. But it's not any, uh, infinite. <laughs> right. It is exactly three point one four one five whatever. Like it is on the number line. It has a place. It belongs somewhere. But infinity. Infinity is not a number. Okay. First thing. It's not a really big number. It's just is bigness, okay? It's very, very big. So strange things happen at infinity. Uh, let me show you a strange thing that happens at infinity. Okay. One half, okay? This doesn't. This just has to do with infinity. It doesn't have to do with this circle in particular. Just infinity. One half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth. Plus one thirty second. Do you see what I'm doing there? Yeah. Oh, no, by four. You're times the bottom numbers by two. By two. So a fourth is how much of a half? Well, half. Uh, it's a half of a half. Yeah. And a uh, eighth is how much of a fourth? Half. half of that. And a sixteenth of an eighth half. is half of that. Uh -huh. Half of that. If I add this up, not a lot, not for a million terms or a billion terms or a trillion terms, but an infinite number of terms, and they never ever stop. Okay, then this will add up to one. Infinity. It'll add up to one. It'll add up to the number one. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Not get close to one. Not even infinitely close to one. It would be one. Because we've, we've done something that we can't really do. Add up an infinite number of terms. We never stop adding on terms. I can, I can show you a little picture of it. A little rectangle. Here's half the rectangle. Okay? So there's the half. And now, well, there's half over here that we haven't used. Let's use half of that. That's a fourth. Then we use half of that. Half a fourth is an eighth. Right? Half of that is a sixteenth. Half of that is a thirty-second. Half of that is a sixty-fourth, a one twenty-eighth, and so on. I can just keep cutting it half and half and half and half. But the thing is I never, 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 ever stop doing that. And if I could do that for infinity. Then I would get one. I would fill in this entire rectangle. Yeah. Right. Whoa. Now that's hard for some people to understand. Yeah. Yeah. Really so you grasp to, to accept to, to believe. believe. Okay. Is it, Mr. Schwer, is it Google Plus like infinity? Google Plus is just a very very big number. I can tell you what that is later. What is it? Uh, if we can get through what I want to get through, I'll tell you. What do we get out of here? 49? 41. Wait, is Google one number? Yeah. Yes, Google is a number. It is? Hold on. Yeah. It's 100, 0. All right, so what's going to happen now is we're cutting this into more and more and more pieces. We're going to cut it into how many pieces do you think? Infinite. infinite number of pieces. When we cut it into an infinite number of pieces, that angle in there gets infinitely small, right? And the angle of each of these binder wedge things that are stacked alternately get infinitely thin, okay? And this actually, once we get to infinity, okay? We get this 90 degree angle here. This is 90, this is 90, this is 90. Not only that, but these things that you're thinking, hey, those are all just like this really, really tiny, tiny, bumpy surface right there. It's not. It turns out, infinity, all of those little Curvy parts, turn into straight. Not curvy anymore, they're just like 
just the very tippy tippy top of this. It's just like an infinite number of points right next to each other, and that makes a straight line. Okay. So this is straight. This is straight, this is straight, this is straight. These are 90 degree angles, so we have what shape? Rectangle. Rectangle, and what's the area of a rectangle? Base, base, base times height. What's the base? Pi r. r. Half the circumference. What's the height? 2. R. R, the radius, right? The radius, again, so the area is equal to pi times r times r. Now, what's r times r? How can I write that? Pi times r squared. R squared. R times r is r squared. 2 times 2 is 2 squared. 5 times 5 is 5 squared. R times r is r squared. Pi r squared. There's the formula for the area of a circle. So the circle into a rectangle. How come it's, there's two r's? Because along here, this the base of the rectangle is half the circumference, which is pi r. The height is r. So base times height would be pi r times r. Pi r times r. Base, this is the base of the rectangle. Oh, and that's the height? Yeah, and this is the height. All right. Molly? But why is the base pi r minus pi r? Well, it's just, you know, we've, we've repeated this process over and over and over until we cut up an infinite number of pieces. Okay, we talked about how they're stacked alternatingly, where there's this little curved piece here, and there's one down here, and there's one down here, there's one up here, there's one down here, there's one up here. It's alternating, right? So half of the circumference is up here, and half of the circumference is down here. Oh, okay. And we do that an infinite number of times, which physically, like in the real world, is impossible. We can't physically do it. Mathematically, we can. We can say if we go for infinity, all we wind up with is not a bunch of arcs, but just a bunch of points, okay, right next to each other, no gaps in between them, which is the definition of a line, all right? And we've created a rectangle. A rectangle has the same area as a circle, and has an area of pi r squared. So all of this is not to say Every time you find the area of the circle, you need to do this. Pi r squared is one that I never forget. I just always remember it's pi r squared for a circle. Okay? Um, and it's not really a, a problem. For trapezoids, yeah, like I said, I remind myself every time what the area of a trapezoid is. Sometimes with parallelograms, I forget, like, oh, that's the same. It has the same area. Like, like look at this picture here. There's a rectangle with a base and a height. There's a parallelogram with the same base and height. And sometimes, I find it hard to believe they have the same area, but then I just cut this into pieces and I move it around and I realize, no, it's true. The base times the height of this parallelogram is the same, right? It gives me the same area as the area of this rectangle. But, that right but what I'm relying on is not my memory of what the formula is. I'm relying on my ability to understand things, move things around, convince myself that it's true rather than Googling it and, well, trusting Google has it right, it probably would. Parents like Google is right. <laughs> um, here's, I like to So like without a calculator, right, to multiply these numbers together, and then probably right away you'll be able to tell me what the area of these rectangles are. Okay. Just to do what we call that, that algorithm, that set of steps that we do to multiply two numbers together. Google is 10 to the 100th power, but it's not spelled like Google in the search engine, it's spelled like this, Google. Okay. It's just a made up word. Name this this number here ten to the hundred. Now that's one with one hundred zeros. Now that's a big number, right? That's more than any, any number you've ever heard of. Come here. Imagine being used. It's more than the money that will ever exist. It's a huge number. If I were to actually try to put down Google Things, that would be a lot of things. Oh, now, a yeah. Google Plex. is 10 to the Google. Oh, 
Now oh, this God. has a, a hundred zeros. This has a hundred, 10 to the hundred has a hundred zeros. How many zeros does this one have? Uh, uh, it has this many zeros. What number is that? That's Google. Uh, I don't know what that'd be. That's Google. It's this number. It's a Google. It has Google zeros. It has Google zeros. Google's a huge number. This number has a Google zeros. Oh, my goodness. And then another one. No. In fact, in fact, if I tried to start to write this number down, and I wrote down, we have a few minutes. Like three minutes. So chill out. If I tried to write this down, I started writing down one, zero, 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 zero. And I wrote really small, so small that every zero fit on a single atom. There wouldn't be enough atoms in the entire universe to hold the Google place. That's oh, how many wow. zeros there. Holy crap. In the universe, there's <laughs> this many particles, approximately. I mean, how could you count all of them? But this is a, a generous estimate. 10 to the 86, that's one with 86 zeros, right? And this has Google zeros, okay? So there wouldn't be enough particles themselves to write one zero on every particle in the entire universe that we've ever So that's a, that's a Google Flex, that's a Google, wow. now you know. Wow, there's okay. not even enough in the universe to do Google. Yeah, you know. uh, yeah, there aren't a Google particles. I could write a Google, I could write 100 zeros, right? I could write that many zeros. Actually representing the, the number itself, that's what this would try to do with its zeros. The, the number of zeros is a Google zero, yeah. Is there like a Google one? Like, Google one? Yeah, like, you know Google there's and one? One, yeah, one billion. Oh, you sure, you can add one to Google. So one Google oh. and one. So like that? Google and one. It would be bigger than a Google. Yeah. One more. One. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not all search engines are named after large numbers. <laughs> so Bing is a name that No, Bing is named after probably a sound. What's the coolest thing?